The views expressed on the following broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Now here are your co-hosts, Marv R., Bruce H., and the Monty Man. Welcome aboard, ye scallywags and scallywaggles. To another episode of The Great Reality with Marv, Bruce, and myself. It's good to have you with us. Hey, listen, our, our email address is take12radio at comcast.net. And uh, well, welcome aboard today. I mean, uh, we, we got some interesting stuff to talk about today. Uh, before we get into anything, though, uh, I want to remind you uh, that if uh, you would like to donate uh, any, any amount to... Uh, the South Albany um, rebuilding project, the Phoenix project, uh, after the the horrendous fire that South Albany High School experienced that took out uh, one of their main buildings, uh, you can go to take12radio.com, click on the Paint the Town red banner, and you can get a t-shirt there, and you can donate and help those kids get uh, get back. You know, people say, well, insurance will pay for it. Well, it takes a long time to get the money from the insurance companies, and then they don't always pay for everything. And so any any donations that come in is uh, is well-received, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, so do that, would you please? Um, also, have you ever tried to make amends to someone that you harmed and they wouldn't receive it? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, Mark? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, um, if, if you who are listening, if that's ever happened to you and you there's somebody in your life that you would just love to, to reconcile with and they're just not willing to do it, maybe it's been years and they're still not willing to do it. Uh, if you go to Take12Radio.com and click on the, very, uh, the banner at the very top of the page, uh, it, it'll take you to a page where you can type in your story about that. And I want to hear from you because we're going to be um, we're going to be launching out on the promises associated with uh, the eighth and the ninth step here uh, very soon. And um, I, I'd like to hear from you because uh, I have a I have a friend that he's he's he basically just walked away and said I never want to talk to you again. And it's been years, and uh, I I went through that, and it was very painful. Um, so I, I know it, it, it can be it can be really painful, but I want to hear your story. What usually happens is the unexpected, and that's people do accept it. But there always there is them cases where people there just are don't there are rare cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so what do you do with that? So we're going to be talking about that in the future. Uh, so if that's you, and you've got somebody in your life that y you would just <laughs> you'd be doing backflips if you could reconcile with them, but they just aren't budging. Uh, tell us your story. Tell us your story. We may use it on the air. All right. <clears throat> da, 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 da. How you guys doing? Good. Yeah. Bruce, you're feeling pretty good today, huh? Wonderful. Yeah. Bruce is feeling pretty wonderful. Uh, we're going to be talking about the promises associated with step six and seven with a twist <laughs> here in a minute. But before we do, I thought this was really interesting. Colorado's extremely profitable marijuana industry could soon come to an end. If an anti-pot group gets their way with a federal lawsuit they filed back in February. Uh, Safe Streets Alliance, SSA, a Washington, D.C.-based group aimed at reducing youth drug use and violent crimes, alleges that both state and local officials in Colorado are violating federal law by promoting the commercialization of marijuana. Because they claim state officials in the state have violated federal racketeering laws, the group believes that individuals or businesses who feel they have been hurt by the marijuana industry have the right to an injunction, trouble damages, and attorney's fees. The SSA, which is chaired by former Reagan administration appointee James Wooten, also wrote in an outline statement that they were using several 
uh, prominent participants in Colorado's pot industry, but didn't specify who. Safe Streets is asking the federal courts to order Colorado officials to comply with federal law and stop issuing state licenses to deal illegal drugs, they wrote. Meanwhile, pro-marijuana advocates in the state argued that legalizing pot has curbed much of the violent crime that SSA works to prevent. They expressed concern that losing the lawsuit would only mean that marijuana businesses and trading would be put back into the hands of violent gangs. Hundreds of millions of dollars in marijuana sales that were previously taking place in a dangerous underground market are now being conducted safely. <clears throat> okay, said Mason Trevitt, a uh, spokesperson for the Marijuana Policy Pro- Project. Well, of course he did. It's hard to imagine why anyone would prefer marijuana be controlled by criminals instead of by a tightly regulated business. If drug cartels relied on um, lit- litigation instead of violence, this is the, uh, is the lawsuit they would file. Yeah, it, they did the same thing with alcohol. Yeah, yeah. This isn't the first lawsuit that Colorado has faced over legal marijuana. Last December, Nebraska, Oklahoma filed a joint lawsuit against the state, arguing that they have suffered the increased uh, law enforcement cost from problems associated with pot. Yes, they have. Um, The lawsuit also claims that Colorado does not have the authority to establish its own policy that is directly uh, counter to federal policy against trafficking in controlled substances, and that by doing so, the state of Colorado has created a dangerous gap in the federal drug control system. Uh, Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper just the name. <laughs> Somebody was stoned when they gave him that name. Uh, said he has discussed how to address the issue with officials from both states, but stated that the filing of a lawsuit is not the most constructive way to find a solution to whatever issues they are uh, th- that are there. Okay, so so if you really think that legalizing pot is going to stop the drug cartels from dealing pot, you're stoned because. As, as the government takes more control over the distribution of marijuana, the quality will drop, the costs will go up, and the cartels are going to have a heyday because they're going to be selling the high-quality pot at whatever price they want to. I mean, people are just deluded. Cracks me up. You know, they, they're complaining about they didn't get the tax revenue, too, that they thought they were going to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know what? I say hooray because we knew this was going to happen. And I want to make it perfectly clear that I'm against this whole thing about legalizing marijuana and, and putting it out there. I think we're going to, this is just the beginning of their problems. Yeah. It's yeah. just the beginning of the problems for us here in Oregon. Well, you know what it is? It's right fighters saying, I want my right to be stoned. I want to walk around with my head in the cloud because I have stress. What are they going to do you when know? they start giving people tickets? <laughs> because I don't like, know, brother. I just think it's. I think it's crazy. I think it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, they're they're, they're just starting to find out what this is all about. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. He well, they took see. the they took the booze out of the the criminals' hands when they in, during when they had the prohibition and put it back into the hands. But then they they still ended up with this huge alcoholic problem. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. learned we've learned very little <clears throat> from our boo boos. All right, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hear from our sponsors, and then we come back. Uh, well, like we got something for you here. I think Cecil's gonna join us. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> What makes the difference in recovery? How can one help a struggling person find his or her way to healing? Substance use and co-occurring mental health conditions provide a number of formidable obstacles that can keep individuals from living the healthy, happy lives that they deserve. What does it take to usher a person from a disease of addiction into long-term recovery? Introducing Foundations Recovery Network, where they believe in providing evidence-based, integrated treatment and patient-centered care. They treat the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. 
Because they treat both substance use and underlying mental health conditions, they are able to address the root causes of addiction and prepare individuals for a sustainable life in recovery. If you have questions about whether you or a loved one may need help, please call this number today, 877-714-1318. That's 877-714-1318. This may be the most important call you ever make. Hi, this is Olivia Fox. And you know, on the internet, there are tons of special networking websites. But one stands apart for a very special reason. This one saves lives. It's MatchingDonors.com. MatchingDonors.com links organ donors with people in need of kidney and other transplants. Did you know in the U.S., 19 people die each day waiting for an organ transplant? And most of them for kidneys. If you've ever considered becoming a living organ donor, or if you're someone in need of an organ transplant, please visit MatchingDonors.com, home of the greatest gift of all the gift of life, MatchingDonors.com. Monty right. Man, I have something <laughs> to share with Bruce. May I share this with him? Sure, go ahead. Well, thank you, Monty yes. Man. Bruce, yes. do you know what I do sometimes when I'm bored? I don't want to know, Cecil. <laughs> Sometimes I get on the computer and I look up acronyms for people's names. And do you know what I found was an acronym for Bruce? <laughs> what is it, Cecil? Biologic Resources under a consortial environment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cecil, I couldn't even it say that. It is among the thousands of <laughs> academic and science abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cecil. Thank you want Cecil. to know what it means in layman's terms? Yes, Cecil, please. It means a list of sources of information within a partnership. <laughs> so because you, Marv, and the Monty Man are kind of a partnership and you have sources of information, the three of you collectively are a bruise. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, that's enough out of me for this week. It's time for Take uh, 12 Trivia. Yes, indeed. Here's what's his name. Do you want to play trivia? Trivia, 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 trivia. It is time for Take 12 Trivia, brought to you this week by Serenity Springs Recovery Center in beautiful Edgewater, Florida, all men's recovery treatment center. Visit their website at serenitystringsrecovery.com. All right. This week's trivia is acronyms. Acronyms. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> I knew that Cecil what, what does I. that mean, anyway? <laughs> Biologic research resources <laughs> under a consortial environment. We are a Bruce. That is actually a true acronym. That is actually actually true. <clears throat> you didn't know you were so so important, did you, Bruce? <laughs> I don't did. We're in trouble here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Cecil has been on the computer way too much. I... All why, right. Why couldn't we just stick with something that yeah. we know, like <laughs> horses or corrals? <laughs> All right, we have three acronyms and a bonus. All right. Morgan. <laughs> what did you say? Morgan. Morgan. That's a horse. Morgan is a horse? Sure Morgan is. horse. Yeah. Morgan horse. Mm -hmm. Whose horse is Morgan? That's a workhorse. Oh, it's a type of horse, like a pinto. A breed. Oh, okay. Yes. A Morgan. All right. So that's your word for today, Morgan? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, the first acronym, M&M's. M&M's. Here are your choices. Uh, number one, Mars and Murray's. Number two, more and more. <laughs> or number three, Monty and Marsha. Mars and Murray's. <laughs> Mars and Murray's? What do you say there, Marv? He's staring at Bruce going, what? <laughs> Mars and Murray's, more and more. Na- it has to be a name for a company. Uh, I would think. I don't know. I'm going to go with number two. Just, more and more? Just to compete with just Bruce. Just compete with Bruce? <laughs> yeah. Well, Bruce, let's see what you get. Okay, you get a Volkswagen horn. Yes, you are correct. It is Mars and Murray's. It's named after Mars founder Forrest Mars and Hershey's Bruce Murray. Number two, here we go. Uh, Number two acronym, TASER. The word TASER. Like a TASER, like the cops have? Yes, yes. Uh, Here are your three choices. Thomas A. Swift's electric rifle, taking a secured, easier reconnaissance, or TASER is just TASER. Well, it's kind of shocking, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Taser is just Taser. Taser just Taser? Yeah. Bruce, Thomas A. Swiss Electric Rifle taking a secured, easier reconnaissance, or Taser is just Taser? Oh, gosh. I'll go with the first one. First one, Thomas A. Well, you, you would be right. Thomas A. Swift's Electric Rifle. The name is a tribute to uh, Victor Appleton's 1911 book, Tom Swift and His Electric wi- Rifle. Amazing, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, what do you get now? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get that again. <clears throat> okay, number three, 3M. 3M, like the 3M company? It's like, uh, okay. Okay, 3M. Uh, is it a Minnesota, uh, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing? Marker, uh, I don't even know if I know that word. Uh, a marker, Manifields, and Magoo are machine makers monstrosity. Uh, first one. First one, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing. Marker, Manifields, and Magoo are machine makers monstrosity. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one. First one, you guys would both be correct. Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, it started by mining stone for use in grinding wheels. But now the shortened 3M company brand is better known for being makers of everything from sticky notes to scotch tape and post-it pads. That's right. So what do we get here? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And here is your bonus. BMW. BMW, the car. Uh, Does it stand for Bavarian Motor Works? Britain's Motors and Wheels are Black Mountain Wasteland. (laughs) <laughs> the second one Britain's Motors and Wheels I'm going to go with the first one Bavarian Motor Works Well Marv would be correct It is Bavarian Motor Works It was named after the region The automaker was founded And is currently headquartered In Bavaria You betcha Woo. There you go Morgan <laughs> Morgan <laughs> Mom, Mom. Alright we'll be right back After this Origins Recovery Centers provides integrated inpatient treatment for substance abuse and co-occurring disorders. At Origins, clients receive expert medical, clinical, and spiritual care individually designed for their needs. Our clients leave Origins with the foundation upon which they will build the rest of their lives. Call now to speak with an admissions specialist. Our toll-free number is 888-843-8935. That's 888-843-8935. Origins, delivering real solutions for real families. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. Therapia exists to help people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. To speak with an addiction specialist, call 1-855-652-4325. That's 1-855-652-4325. Or visit our website at www.therapia.net. 
Therapia Addiction Healing Center, restoring lives one step at a time. Zippity doo da day. Okay, the rest of the show is uh, brought to you by Free by the Sea, freebythesea.com. Check out their website. And uh, this Friday, mm-hmm. we will have uh, two, two of the community members. That's Instead of calling them clients or patients, they call them community members. I like that. Uh, we'll be on the show this Friday to share their experience, strength, and hope. And a little bit about Free by the Sea in uh, beautiful Ocean Park, Washington. All right. All right. Um, the, um, the promises. We've been talking about the promises associated with each step in the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous out of the big book, Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, uh, I think it's very interesting uh, that the promises associated with step six and step seven are, you guys have any clue what they might be? Surprises. Surprise you? Yeah. Well, there are none. (laughs) There are no actual promises written out in this. Uh, So we're going to talk about that. On page 76 of the big book, my, this is my my uh, book is falling apart here, the third edition. Um, it says where we are in step six and seven. There's only two paragraphs. Uh, I think it's really interesting that Bill, when he writes this, he, he isn't real clear. He doesn't just come out and say, now you're at step six, now you're at step seven. Um, he does with step six. But he, but he blends it into step seven. And, and let's just read this. It says, uh, step six in italics, it means pay attention. So he's very clear of where we're at in the book. Step six, we have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which w- we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something, we will not let go. We ask God to help us be willing. There's a prayer directive there. Okay. He doesn't stay, say step seven here, but now the next paragraph is step seven. When ready, we say something like this. My creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character, which stands in the way of my usefulness <clears throat> to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. And then it says at the end of that, it says we have then completed step seven. Um, So there's not actual, like all the other steps, actual promises that are laid out in these. Now, there are promises that come true as a result of following these directions. But there isn't any actually laid out in these two steps in the text, like in the others, which I thought was really curious. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about this. Um, we know we lose a lot of people at step four. We've talked about that and why. Because it, you know, we're starting to look at ourselves and it's very uncomfortable and that kind of thing. But a lot of people skip over step six because it's so short. Have you found that to be true, Bruce? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Why do you and think that I is? I think it's one of the most vital uh, steps there is. I do too. Yeah, I think it's absolutely necessary. I think that if a person has done step five and they went turn, home. Turn your mic a little sideways. Oh, I'm, yeah, there I'm, you go. I'm sorry. Uh, if they've done step five mm-hmm. and they've answered the questions mm-hmm. that are on the bottom of uh, page 75. Right. And then they're willing to do this. I really and truthfully believe if you're doing the steps and you walk into this step, six, there is no doubt in your mind that you're in the process of learning to trust God. Hmm. See, you want to get a, not just believe in him, you want to know him. And you want him to be working in your life. Listen to what it says again. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Are we now ready ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take all of them all, every one? Now here's the part that where we could, we start to learn. If we still cling to something, we will not and we will not let go. 
We ask God to help us be willing. So he starts out saying willingness is, as being indispensable, and he, and he ends that paragraph asking God, for God for us to be, help us be willing. We don't even want to do it. We no. don't want to trust him. And this is just a very simple way of learning to trust. You know. Well, I don't know if, if it has to do with we don't want to trust him as much as it has to do that we don't believe that he's going to take those things from us. Yes, absolutely. Good point, because don't we hear, and at least I have, I've, I've heard, heard in, in, in the rooms, people say, well, I don't want God to take all my character defects away. I mean, some of them I like. Some, some of them I think are beneficial. You know, but here it says all. It does say all. Mm-hmm. But I think you're right, Marv. I think we don't want, there's ones we don't want to let go of. Um, why do you think we want to hold on to them? Who we've been trusting all our lives? Us. Yeah. See, that's that's our our one of our character defects, mm-hmm. right there. Not only uh, as, does it have to do with trust, but uh, for myself in the beginning, mm-hmm. it was to actually believe that God cared enough to take that stuff away from me. Because I thought I owned it. I'd spent so many years in that world, and there it was so hard for me to conceive that God could change me to be something um, different, something better. Um, so belief was for me was a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Did did you? <clears throat> So you, so you had a hard time believing that God would take oh, those away. Oh, I spent several years, uh, I'm going to bring up the word grace. Yeah. Believing in that grace. Right. How, how is that possible? Uh, I had never experienced anything like that. So why would I automatically believe that if, I, if I'm willing, God's grace is going to be extended to me? with forgiveness and mercy and, mm-hmm. and love. Um, that was uh, unheard of. In my mind, I just could not conceive that at all. Yeah. Zilt. I mean, it took years for me to come to a point to even start believing it. What changed? What, what, what do well, you think changed? Well, what changed belief? was when I started, mm-hmm. then... Uh, with tenacity like a bulldog, I hung on to it because so many people around me, uh, people in the program, uh, Christians that I had friends, right, uh, kept reinforcing, reinforcing that that God has nothing but good in mind for me. Mm. And it took a long time, but I finally got to a point where I said, hey, it's like they say in the meetings, either God is or he isn't. Sure. Uh, I've got to make a choice here. I, I, and so I give up. That's what I did. I became willing or I surrendered. You surrendered, right. And even after I did that, the battle still rages on. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it's, it's for some people, it's just... Really hard. So for people out there that, that, that are listening that have heard it said or perhaps you've said it yourself, well, I don't you know, I don't think it means that God's gonna take every character defect away or uh uh things that are objectionable away. Well it says it twice. Um are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have omitted or objectionable? Then he says it again. Can he now take them all, every one? So he does, we, we do want him to take every single one. In the order that that happens and how that occurs <laughs> is some, sometimes a mystery to us, right? It's up to God. Yeah, that's up to God. So just because he hasn't removed one right now doesn't mean he doesn't want to remove it. And the other thing is what struck me while you were talking we don't know for sure what those are, those defects. It's, yeah, I was going to— there, There's things that are going to come up in our walk yeah. 
that's going to slap us upside the face. And holy moly, where that – I didn't know I did that kind of stuff right. or, or whatever. I, I had a – when I was going through the Teen Challenge program years ago, the educational coordinator called me into his office. And he said, Mr. Meyer, I, you know, I think I know what your problem is. And I said, what? He goes, you're full of pride. You know, and I am, as I sit here right now, I, you could hook me up to a lie detector test and I would pass this. I did not know that. Yep. Not only did I not know that, I didn't believe it. I thought, wow, you know, I'm always letting people have their way. I'm always doing this. I'm, And I told him that. I said, I'm, I'm always gracious. I'm always kind. I'm like, he goes, you hear how many times you're saying I'm? I went, oh, Wow. I, I really did. I thought that I was a pretty humble guy. I really believed in it. If you hooked me up to to a lie detector, I would have passed it. Yeah, um, it usually leads to the procession. That's yeah, that's amazing. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. You bet. Yeah. I I'd like to to come in on what Marv's talking about here a little bit. Yep. Is that I believe that. That was exactly what uh, was happening with Mark. But with me, it looked just a little different, you know. I recognized that I wasn't willing, you know. I really didn't have the willingness that uh, they were talking about. Okay. And so I had to use the directive. And I knew my sponsor couldn't give it to me, and I knew the steps couldn't give it to me. So I prayed to God for the willingness you know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, he gave it to me. You know, he he really did. And I don't think it was all. I think it's, uh, I don't even know, like Marv said, what a lot of them are. They slap you upside the face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did know, and I was willing to, to, to turn those things over to him that were objectionable to him, that stood in my way of my usefulness. Uh, to him, at this point, uh, I was willing to do anything because of what was behind me. I'm talking about when I first started to do this, this thing that was pushing me, this this suffering that I had went through because of the addiction, you know, the trips to the penitentiary, the not being able to stay sober for more than an hour or a week. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that's that sort of thing. You, you know what I, I love, and sometimes we miss this uh, uh, about uh, what's in this book, is it's important that we understand before we can go to another step that the step previous to that, that, that we have satisfactorily you know, <clears throat> understood it, participated in it, and it says right here, uh, if we can answer to our satisfaction, and that's talking about step five. So it's saying, you know, make sure that you've done this, is what it's saying before we move on. So if we can do this to our satisfaction, we then look at, and then it says step six. Um, and so step six is is a preparation to do step seven. Yeah, you're, and I think they're asking us to look at those five questions. Yes. You know, and, and, and answer those. Right, you right. Know. Right, mm-hmm. right. Uh, and so then in, in this, we're asking God to help us be willing to remove these things. Uh, some of them we are willing to have him remove him. And it says, when ready. Boy, that's a that's a loaded statement right there. When ready. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah. many times do we hear people say, well, I'm just not ready? You know. How many times do we say we're ready and we're not? right. Oh, yeah, yeah, we think we are. Mm-hmm. And then you hear people say, well, I remember my sponsor took my fourth step, tore it up, and said, do it again. And he maybe knew something we didn't know. We weren't ready. Maybe we didn't understand step one. You know, so when ready is really is is really vital. But then it says, and this is uh, assuming we're ready, when ready, we say something like this. And here's the prayer directive. My creator, I am willing that you would have, or you should have all of me. There he says it again, all good and bad. Okay, so we're going to give up the good too? You bet. 
all of me means all of me. Um, because I sometimes perceive what's good in me as being good. And it's, I mean, what's bad in me is being good. And I, I think it's good and it's not. So I need to let him have it all because I don't know what's good and what's bad. You know, particularly in my early recovery. I pray that you now remove from me every, and instead of saying all, he says every, every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. I think that is awesome because this is our job now, to be of maximum service to God and our fellows. The the thing that I think I hear you saying is, is there's not a, uh, a process in this? It's like we have to do it all, like, or 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 nothing. I I I think the prayer directive and our willingness is all or nothing. The prayer directive the re- and the willingness. The result is a process. The result, exa- That's very <clears throat> well put. Yes, the result is the process. Okay, but we have to be all in on this. I got, I got, I got what you're saying now. Yeah. Um. You know what I think. No. Maybe you don't. (laughs) Well, you know, think about it a minute. Isn't it really neat what Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob and their cohorts, the way they wrote that up? Because uh, as we've been talking about it, I'm thinking of the Bible. Uh Uh-huh. And it says, all men have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. And Bill Wilson and the boys, with their finesse, knew that that would be a lightning bolt to recovering alcoholics. So they wrote it in the way they did, but deeper in in, uh, our humanity, it's sin. I don't care what anybody says. You bet it is. And and we, I know I didn't at first. Right. I didn't want to say. That's a hard word to swallow, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And mm. and the the part I like too is the underlying message of what the boys are saying in that book is is that's what it is. But hey, God accepts you just the way you are. I I and words and all, <laughs> and and that means humbling up. <clears throat> excuse me, humbling up and say, okay, Lord. Here I'm a I am. fallible human being, yeah. and I'm screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, the whole time Mar was talking, that's what I wanted to say, that it, it's really a step into humbling yourself into humility. You know, when I first got... Yeah, it's a, a recognition yeah, of that. When I first got in a program, I had a lot of friends outside of the program that, that were Christians, and we would have discussions about these steps and stuff. Mm-hmm. And in particular, this one guy, he, he really upset me <laughs> because he said to me, Marv, it's sin. Mm. And I wanted to pop him right between the eyes. Right, right, know? right. But he's absolutely correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. and what? And, and and for those that are listening that are going, Ew! and they're cringing right. at that word. Yeah, let, let let your heart not be troubled. Sin is a Greek word that means to miss the mark. Uh-huh. It's right. an archery term, and it's, isn't it interesting that when we take aim and we're pointing our our arrow towards the target, and we get distracted, and per- perhaps we fire prematurely perhaps we veer off from the target a little bit because we get distracted bruce and i were talking about worldly clamors before the show that our arrow either misses the target completely or falls short of it therefore shortcoming uh so if you put it in those terms that that's what helped me i thought you know i i can i can i can you know chew on that one i'm missing the mark i'm falling short short of the target and don't we all do that? I think everybody can 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 hold on to that. Right. And say, yeah, you know, I I do do that. I do miss the mark. And the word in the Greek transliterated is the word sin. And so, like I said, don't let your heart not be troubled. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be. And I and you're right. I love the way they write this. Mm-hmm. 
because they're writing it with the alcoholic mind in mind. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's great. Uh, and and let, let me say this real, uh, real quick. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for those that are fairly new and uh, trying to get a grasp on this thing, um, uh, there's a little piece in the bigger book that says, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So if you're a beginner like I used to be, and a lot of times still am, um, that is where God's grace kicks in. And it's mm-hmm. for all of us. It's for all of us. Mm-hmm. And when you're kicking your own butt and trying to figure this thing out, first of all, um, God loves us, all of us, no matter where we've been, what we've done. He loves us. And I think it's important uh, for people to get a grasp of that, even though they can't feel it, they can't see it. Mm-hmm. But man, hold on to that. Mm-hmm. God's love is for everybody. Hmm. Yeah. Thank Sorry, goodness. I didn't mean to <laughs> go into <laughs> preaching mode, but, no, that, that's but I, right. couldn't, I couldn't that's help right. it. I, <clears throat> well, because the, we because we think that we're not good. We're just yeah, not good enough. Yeah, we got to get we got to get cleaned up to take a bath. <clears throat> we think that. Yeah, and, and we don't. And really yeah. true for people in the first maybe two or three months of being in the program. He might work in your life, but he's not going to work in mine is what I thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, these promises. will come. When I heard people read the promises in the, in the meetings, I would think uh, oh, that's, that's good for you. Mm-hmm. You know, but that'll never come true for me. But, but if, again, I'd like to emphasize that we're talking about steps here. Yeah. And uh, we're talking about one, and we, we realized that one is the one that we had to do 100% yeah. our powerlessness uh, and because we have these pride issues and everything else. Then we did step two. Okay, we came to believe that a power greater than ourself could restore us to sanity. Then we, then we could start whatever our belief was at the time. Right. You know, we could start from there. It was it was it was open door to all of us. Right. And then we asked uh step three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over. Okay. And so then we take a an honest look at ourselves, asking God to help us. And we took this honest look at ourselves and then we shared it with another human being. And I think if we've done that and then we've asked answered those questions, we really uh, are starting to go to God with a different heart. We see our need. Yeah. You know, in, we read on than we did. some level. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not thinking we know it all or anything right. like that. But on some level, I think uh, it, it, and that's what I love about the steps. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that's God's grace, you know, and it, it's for all of us. I, I love this next statement because this is an admission that we are we that we are powerless. It says, "God grant me strength." And then there's a comment that goes on. God grant me strength. Why? Because I don't have it. Right. I don't <clears throat> have it. So once again, he's returning to step one. Just in that statement, I'm powerless. God grant me strength. And it says, as I go out from here. To do what? To do your bidding. What's your bidding? To be a maximum of service to God and my fellows. It, it just said that prior to that. It says, Amen. And then it says, We have then completed step seven. So the the result that is going to occur as, or, or the, the stuff that's going to occur as a result of six and seven um, is not going to take necessarily take place just because you read step six and step seven and said this prayer, it's going to be a process of removing character defects. It's going to be an ongoing thing. And like you said, we're kind of like the Golden Gate Bridge, right? We paint it, get to the end, and we find out it needs to be painted again. It keeps coming up. Like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I got another defect? Yeah, this is a lifelong <laughs> thing. Because if we don't discover a, a defect we didn't know we have, we create new ones. Uh. I mean, we just do. We're just because we do miss the mark. And so I am constantly having to go back and saying, 
Lord, give me your strength to 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 go out from here so I can be a maximum service to God and your and my fellows. Uh, but God, I, I admit that I've got issues and I need you to remove them. Isn't it interesting? It doesn't say we now remove our own character defects. Hmm. So yeah, we ask God to. Well, and the other part of the story is we think we know which ones God's going to remove in which order. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because don't you know I'm working so hard yeah. on this one? Yeah. You yeah. know, I've been working, and, and, and I hear that. I've heard that, and I've said it. Man, I have been working on this one character defect for years. Well, maybe that's my problem. Yeah, I heard somebody say the other day that uh, along the lines of that is that it their recovery doesn't look like what they thought it would be. You know what I mean? Right. How God was going to do work in their lives. Yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> you know, remove this one or this one. Which begs the question like we, we asked last week, what if God doesn't save you the way you think he should? Exactly. Then what are you going to do with him? Well, <laughs> and that, Bruce says it so many times uh, in different ways, too. That's the importance of a personal relationship. Because God is not going to work with Bruce the same way he works with me. And I think people look around the rooms and say, oh, that's how God does it. And the fact of the matter is, is God's going to do it in that person's life the way God wants to do it, not the way somebody else thinks it should be done. Well put. Yeah, I, I, I think that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. I do too. Yeah. And remember what we're getting, we're getting prepared here too. And why we, I hate to keep going back to this. We're getting prepared here too to go do the next two steps, right? Aren't we? Yep. Yep. If we don't do this, how can we do uh, eight and nine? Eight and nine properly. Yeah. We can't. If we haven't learned something about humility, and I think when you get to eight and nine, you're going to learn something huge, absolutely <clears throat> huge. That if you don't know how to forgive, then you can't make it amends. Ooh. Therefore, God, give me strength. You bet. Because as I go out from here, what am I getting ready to do? Something that requires a lot of strength, and I don't have it. Mm -hmm. um, and is it, yeah. could, could this be God's will to, to make amends, you know, mm -hmm. to set things right? And then before we go to him, isn't that what he said? Get things right, and yep. then come to me. Yep. That he offers. Yep. He didn't just. He didn't want that. Right. So and right. I. So I think that the whole thing is to learn to live out of the blessings of, of what he's done. Right. You know what I mean. Me too. So next so, week, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, Mark. that's all right. I was no, just go going to say. So I got to take the wood pile out of my own eye. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't just have a log. He's got a wood pile. He's got four cords in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. So next week, uh, promises associate, associated with step eight and step nine uh, is what we're going to be talking about. Um, don't forget, please, listeners, don't forget, if you have attempted to make amends with somebody and they have not received it and you are aching in your heart to reconcile with that person and they just don't want to budge, I want to hear your story. Click on the banner at the very top of the page at take12radio.com. It'll take you to a page where you can type your story and submit it to us. Do that for me, would you please? Uh, and uh, depending on how many we get, if we get one, one submission, we'll use that one. If we get 12, we'll pick one. Uh, sometimes we get flooded with emails. Sometimes we don't. It just, just depends on the weather, I guess. Uh, so do that if you would. I'd appreciate it very, very much. Do we have time? Do you want to hear a quick one? Yeah. Yes, I do. We do have time. Uh, okay. Two days ago. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, two days ago. And I'm not going to mention names. Okay. But we're sitting in a, a parking lot over in Central Oregon. Uh-huh. The guy that I'm with wants to run into the store real quick and get a pair of sunglasses. Okay? So he opens the door. He gets out. He goes in the store, and I'm sitting in a vehicle. About two minutes, this woman 
walks around the car, and she is cussing and hollering and screaming. I mean, violent. And I looked over there and, and trying to figure out what's going on. Well, she thought this guy had opened his door and hit her vehicle. <laughs> so anyway, he comes back. And I told him. He said, oh, yeah. He said, when I got out, I accidentally tapped the mirror on her vehicle. Uh huh. He said, w what do you think I ought to do? Well, I didn't realize it, but she had backed out and just backed up behind us and parked. And so I said, well, um, maybe you should go apologize to her or say something. Right. He said, yeah. He said, I, I think I probably better do it. He gets out of the vehicle, goes back there, and all of a sudden I hear this hollering and screaming, and there's going to be a fight. And I looked in the mirror, and there's two uh, older teenage kids and this woman, and they're just screaming at the top of their lungs at, at, him? at my friend. Yeah. And he comes back to the vehicle. He gets in and visibly shook up. Right. I mean, he is shook up. And he's telling me, he said, I think that one kid was going to uh, pull a knife out. And he, wow. And, and, I mean, he was upset, and we took off, and and he's just talking about it. Just yeah. uh, obviously. Uh, Very shook up, yeah. yeah. And I said, wait a minute. I said, look. I said, you did the right thing. I said, the results of it are not under your power. Mm. Point is, you did the right thing, and whatever they did with it is their business. I says, take, you know, acknowledge that you did the right thing, and don't, and let it go. Yeah. It took him a half hour to let it go. Yeah. But sometimes that's the way that stuff works. Your intentions are to do good, to make things right, and it just goes upside down. And yeah. I, that was just a couple of days ago. And, and I believe those boys would have hurt him if he hadn't uh, been smart enough to get out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Back, yeah. Back yeah back. He didn't make it worse for them or himself. Yeah. So anyway, sometimes that, that yeah. says, as some, sometime in the future, I'll tell, tell you my story, my parking lot story. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> it, <laughs> it shakes you up. It, it, I don't know about you guys. I don't do well with people screaming at me. It just, I don't know how to respond. I mean, I, I'm not a, you know, I don't go back and flip them off and all that. I get all shook up inside. Yeah. I, I like kind of become this little baby. I just, mm. it just yeah. tears me in two. We know about my parking lot experience. <laughs> Bruce can share that story. Yeah, that's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's very. See, it's, and this is where we need the willingness Yeah. to uh, do these things and to, uh, and I don't believe we can do it properly unless we can forgive. I'm not saying that the other person is right, wrong, you're right, wrong, but I'm talking about be some sort of forgiveness in your life because of all that's been done for you. Right. Yeah. 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 God grant me your strength. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You bet. All right. Thanks, guys. You're we'll see you next week. Promises associated with steps eight and nine next week when we come back with another episode of The Great Reality. Until then, we're wishing God's perfect serenity for you. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting.